reaction rolling in this midday after the Washington Post released an article on the lethal effects of AR-15 rifles. It shows graphic photos never seen publicly from inside the classroom in Robb Elementary in Uvalde, where two teachers and 19 students were killed. We are not going to show those photos to you, but we do want to warn you, even just hearing about them, will be difficult. Our Natalie Haddad read the article and spoke to the father of one of the victims. Now already there are mixed feelings about this latest Washington Post article. Again, the information we are about to share is disturbing. Now the article titled Terror on Repeat offers a look into the destruction of the AR-15. It details numerous mass shootings, like the 2017 shooting on the Las Vegas Strip that killed 60 and wounded 412, and the Sutherland Springs shooting here in Texas. Additionally, the Allen Mall shooting in our own backyard in North Texas this past May. Now, much of the article is made up of testimonials from families, survivors, and first responders who had to witness the aftermath. But the most notable thing is the graphic images. Again, we're not showing those images to you, but we are going to talk about them. You do see how bullets tore through church pews, and in Uvalde, you see images of blood in the classrooms and body bags lining a hallway. Families of the Uvalde massacre victims have known about this article for some time. Some parents of the children posted on social media asking the public not to share the article. Earlier this week, Kimberly Garcia, for example, the mother of Amory Jo Garza, posted on X to instead share pictures of her child and the other victims when they were alive and happy. But there is one parent, Brett Cross, who feels differently. His son, Uzziah Garcia, was killed at Robb Elementary School that day. Speaking exclusively with me for WFAA, Brett says he wants the world to see these photos. Here's why. It needs to be shown because, like I said, the, the city and the state and, and, and nobody is giving us anything. You know, it's, it's like they wait for us to shut up so that they can just sweep it under the rug and act like it didn't happen. And I'm not going to allow that. Um, I'm going to fight for my kid and I'm going to be loud about it and I am going to push and, you know, this, it, you know, this is going to, to shock some people, but I do not think that the Washington Post is putting it out as a, as something of a shock factor. Now, in the Washington Post article, there is a link that takes you to a separate piece altogether explaining why they wrote it. They say they had two goals to advance the public's understanding of AR-15s while also being sensitive to victims' families and communities. The Washington Post called it an examination of mass killings over the last decade. I'll send it back to you in the studio. So what has changed inside Texas schools since Uvalde? Lawmakers created new state laws that just went into effect this school year. All public school campuses must have armed officers and all school buildings will have safety inspections every five years. After Uvalde, government Ab Governor Abbott asked for a review of all external entry points of every public school. More than 2,800 campuses were audited between September and December of 2022. Inspectors at 95% of the campuses did not gain access. State lawmakers also took up some proposals on guns, but nothing passed in this year's legislative session. One bill would have raised the age at which you can buy a semi-automatic rifle from 18 to 21. Families of the Uvalde shooting victims believe that would have saved the lives lost that day. Other bills would have enhanced background checks, expanded safe storage requirements, and banned red flag laws. Again, all of those stalled in Austin. You can find more of the new Washington Post article and what's changed and what has not changed in Texas since Uvalde right now on WFAA.com or on the WFAA app.